You've probably heard of stem cells by now, and you probably know that every cell in our body, whether it's a muscle cell or a nerve cell or a skin cell or a red blood cell or any other type of cell really, they all came from a common group of stem cells during development. So all of these really, uh, really specialized cells like this muscle cell here with its little contractile proteins and this nerve cell here that can send signals and, and this waterproof skin cell here and, and this red blood cell that carries our oxygen, all of these came from these stem cells up here which were completely unspecialized. So how does something like this happen? Well, it's, it's actually pretty interesting. Let, let me first give you an analogy here. So just imagine a library, right? Like the one you used to go to um, when you were a teenager or something like that, and, and the one that you hopefully still go to. It has all the books you can imagine, right? But depending on which books you borrow and which books you read, you are changed. You end up knowing a totally different subset of stuff compared to someone who read different books than you, right? But all the books that you both read are still in this one library. And there's actually a really similar system with our genes and with our DNA. So recall that inside the nucleus of each cell is your DNA. This is our library. This is our set of genetic instructions for, for building our entire body. And within our DNA library here, we have our books, which, which are segments of our DNA that we call genes. And genes give our cells specific instructions on how to make different kinds of proteins. And having different proteins around, well, that changes the way our cells look, and it changes um, the way our cells act. So it gives our cells really different abilities. So, well, I mean, with the exception of the red blood cells, which lack nuclei, every single somatic cell in your body contains the exact same DNA. Yet, this muscle cell here, right, it, it looks and it acts differently to this neuron here. And that's because they're each reading different books in our DNA library. They're, they're using different genes to make their proteins. And just a bit of terminology here, when a cell is actively using certain genes, it's said to be expressing those genes. And a gene being expressed is said to be turned on, and one not being expressed is turned off. So just keep that in mind. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, because in the end, it all relates to how our stem cells all the way up here end up differentiating into our specialized cells down here. So the bottom line is, in order to differentiate, to, for example, uh, specialize into our muscle cell here, this stem cell up here turned on its muscle cell genes. So here's its DNA, and, and I'm highlighting its muscle cell genes that it turned on right now. And it also turned off some other genes. So by turning on its muscle cell genes, now proteins get made within the cell that changes how the cell looks. See, now it's a bit elongated, right, this muscle cell here, and it, and it also changes its functions. Now our muscle cell has contractile proteins in it to help it uh, be a nice, useful muscle cell to help us move around, right? And our neuron here, our stem cell turned on its become a neuron genes here, right? and it turned off some other ones. And then the cell started producing all the proteins it needed to turn into a neuron. Like the proteins that would make it elongate like this and grow out these little spiky things up here called dendrites, okay? And let me also say that, remember our stem cell up here was pluripotent. It could turn into any of our uh, somatic adult body cells. But once it's specialized into these mature cell types, these can't go on to differentiate into other cells. They, and they actually can't de-differentiate either. They can't go backwards up to stem cells naturally, at least in us humans. So, so, so these cells stick around to form our bodies. So by now you must be wondering, well, what determines what genes in a given cell are turned on or off? Uh, in other words, how, how in the heck does the cell know it's time to specialize into a different cell type? Well, it turns out that cells decide what they're going to grow up to be based on cues they get. And these cues can be from their internal environment, or it, they, the cues can come from their, their external environment, their outside environment. So let me just show you two major ways um, this can happen here, these cues. So in the development of lots of different organisms, us humans included, we start out with one cell, right, the zygote. And our zygote has, has these little proteins called transcription factors floating around in its cytoplasm. 
and also the, the precursors of these transcription factors are there too, little bits of mRNA. So two things to note. First, transcription factors will activate certain genes and turn them on. That's what transcription factors do. And second, notice that all these little transcription factors are clustered around in one area. And, and this is important because when this zygote starts to divide, where do all these transcription factors end up? Well, like you see here, they only end up in the cells that divided off in that original region where they all were clustered around, right? So these cells up here don't have any, or don't have much. And these cells down here have a whole heap of transcription factors. So now you can imagine that different genes will get activated in these different cells, and, and that'll determine what each of these cells specializes into, because now they're going to make different proteins. So this mechanism here is pretty appropriately called asymmetric segregation of cellular determinants. It's this big mouthful here, but you can, if we break it down here, you can see asymmetric because it really just refers to how these transcription factors are not symmetrically distributed among the daughter cells here. And, and these, um, this uh, cellular determinants bit is just referring to the transcription factors or their precursors. So that's one way that cells can be made to specialize into different things just having different uh, transcription factors around. But the second way to specialization that I'll mention is, is called inductive signaling, or just induction. And induction is kind of like really strong encouragement, almost like peer pressure, where one cell, or actually usually a group of cells, can induce another group of cells to differentiate by just using some signals. And the signals could be passed a few different ways. So they could be passed by diffusion. They could be released from one group and, and just diffuse over to the other group where they'll bind receptors on the other groups and cause the cells over there to differentiate. Or the induction could be done by direct contact between cells, right? You can see little, um, you can see these little surface proteins on each of these cells binding each other. That's direct contact. Or you could have signals pass through gap junctions, which are little connections, or actually I should say connexons, between cells that are connected. And, and that could induce the cell to specialize, the cell over here. And I call this a connexon because in cellular biology, these proteins that make up part of a gap junction are, are collectively called a connexon. Anyway, induction is absolutely key in forming lots of our body parts, like um, our limbs are formed by partially through induction, and our, our ears and our eyes, and lots more of our body parts are formed through induction in development and embryological development. So induction is really important in cell specialization. And so on that note, I'll just remind you, remember the goal here with the cytoplasmic determinants, those transcription factors I talked about earlier, and then all these signals that you get in induction, remember the goal is to get cells to change their gene expression, right? To flick on or flick off certain genes, which, which ultimately is what causes cells to differentiate into um, other more specialized cells.